let's talk really briefly about knives. Now, again, um, as I've stated in other stage combat videos, the main two things I'm interested in are safety and story. So there are lots of things that we draw on from real um, technique which inspire the movement that we use in stage combat but in the same way even on film the same way then argument in real life tends to be people shouting each over each other getting really super um, emotional and almost getting to the point where you can't understand what's being said on on stage on screen there's always a certain degree of slightly expanded kind of quality um to slightly opened out quality to the language whether it's physical whether it's spoken um so the this, the knife stuff i'm going to talk to you about is geared towards stage combat okay it's geared towards stage combat as opposed to real fighting um hopefully you are not getting out into any situations where you need to know how to fight for real with a knife um that's that's definitely a bad thing avoid that please okay so knife fighting in terms of stage combat so um here's my knife OK, my stage knife. It's really important that I express. I know this will sound hopefully like common sense to most people. If you are practicing this at home, please don't use any kind of real knife, whether it's a sharp knife, a blunt knife. Please don't use any kind of real knife. You can use other items. Take this. I think it's a spatula. It's a spatula. A spatula. There's nobody else here. A spatula. Um, I can quite easily adopt the same kind of positioning and stance. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Positioning, uh, so stance, kind of hand stance. Is that a thing? Grip. Um, with the spatula that I can with the knife. So use use something else. Okay, use a spatula or a wooden spoon or a ruler uh, or, or whatever you've got to hand. But please don't use an actual knife. Okay, so looking at our knife side on. There's lots of different shapes of knife. This particular one has um, is represented as having one kind of thin edge. OK, so you've got the back end, which is super wide. OK, and then the thin edge here, um, which is actually quite thin. But we've got to remember this is a this is a, a rubber knife, thankfully. Um, so that's that's OK in this instance. Um, so that's our cutting edge there. We can do kind of nasty things with the point of that as well. Um, but that's our cutting edge. So we want to be aware of that when we are when we are fighting with this kind of single edged knife. Um, so we've got a couple of different grips that we use for stage combat. This one uh, tends to be referred to as um, as the orthodox grip, although you might hear people refer to it as a standard grip possibly as well. So if we look at our knife kind of side on here. The cutting edge is pointing down and I'm taking my thumb and I'm popping it on top of the kind of very kind of blade end of the grip here with my forefinger underneath. OK, so if anybody's done any fencing, you'll see this is a kind of vaguely similar um, grip that we're setting up here to how you might fight with a sword in fencing or, or indeed kind of related styles in stage combat. I'm then going to wrap the other three fingers around here as well. And what this does rather than this kind of gripping it, what we tend to refer to as axe handle style here, um, is it gives us a bit of manoeuvrability okay so it gives us a little bit of fluidity um, it allows us to regulate and shift and change how much tension we are putting into that grip and again as I've said in other videos if we are choosing when to put tension in if we are relaxed in our body if we're mobile in our body we can make choices as actors in terms of how we're performing things so that's our um, standard our kind of orthodox uh, grip here uh, and then when we're cutting with that we're cutting with that edge out there and it's really important to think about where that edge is so often we forget about that during a piece of choreography especially when we first start out and we end up cutting with the wrong end or we cut with the side of the knife and straight away we um it sounds like I'm, I'm attempting a pun but we but we we kind of blunt the 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 kind of danger of our fight we blunt the kind of the the sort of high stakes kind of vicious element of it because the audience don't necessarily consciously think about it but they recognize on some level that it doesn't make any sense this is the dangerous bit that's the bit that we want to make contact with um, and just as a brief extension into this when we are then cutting we want to articulate everything in our body so we're not kind of stretching out that's what I think of as sort of a, a, a toddler painting with a great big kind of paintbrush. We're allowing extension into all of our body, but we're allowing it to kind of be mobile and articulated. So my joints are doing their own jobs. My shoulder is doing its job. My elbow is doing its job. My wrist, my fingers, everything is kind of... We've suddenly got, rather than it being one joint here from the shoulder, we've got loads and loads and loads of detail, loads and loads of kind of stuff kind of going on there that can help us to control and articulate and make that really dynamic. And actually working further down the body, we'd be thinking about what we're doing in our chest, what we're thinking about um, in, in the kind of middle of our body, which is, is arguably the most important 
part, the core. What's our core doing? How is that? That's where we've got all that, that all that momentum, all that movement. How do we support that? And then ultimately down into our legs, um, which is, is, is the foundation for that core. We talk about legs quite a lot in stage combat, but actually it's the core that's doing the work. The legs are supporting that movement. Okay, um, so bending your legs, but using your legs to support your core, to support your shoulders, to support your everything else all the way up to your knife here. Okay, nice, loose and light. From there, okay, I'm gonna switch um, the knife around to what tends to be our other most commonly used grip. Um, and there's lots of different ways of doing this. Number one is practice. Okay, practice and, and, and get what, what works for you into action. The way I tend to mechanically do it, is I, you can see my middle finger is kind of more or less halfway down the, the grip anyway. So I tend to shift my thumb um, down to meet the middle finger instead of the forefinger. And then I open my hand out and I let the weight of the knife itself twist it round there. So you, you may, if, you, if you're using something really like with a ruler and you're new to this, you may struggle with that a little bit. So if you can find something with a bit of weight behind it, great. OK, so that knife shifts around there. And the only real way to make this work is to practice it. OK, it's coming back up with a little flick up and around there, but still between thumb and middle finger. Once it's flipped down into what we kind of loosely tend to term uh, the military grip, I'm then putting my thumb on top as well. Um, it'd be slightly less relevant with a, a, a knife with a guard, but still important. But with this knife here where there's no guard at all, if my thumb's not on top and it stabs into something and to make contact, this is in terms of the story again, which is something we've always got to be conscious of, then my hand would slide down and that would be very, very bad. The military grip sees the blade pointing outwards. Okay, so you have to really articulate with this. It's very easy for this to become quite flat and turn into nothing. So you have to really, again, push and extend and articulate from your core, always from your core. So I'm moving my arms, but actually you can see my shoulders beginning to twist there straight away. And that's not because I'm twisting my shoulders. If I twist my shoulders without moving my core, um, all that really happens is I, is I, feel, a, I feel a twinge in my back and my, uh, and my stomach. So I drive that with the core, which is um, possible because my legs are bent and my body is kind of nice and relaxed and soft. So I've moved my core and you can see how much my shoulders turn and that's what pulls the knife round. And this is applicable to kind of pretty much everything that we're doing in stage combat. The core turns, the legs facilitate that and that allows everything up here to do its job. Okay, so we combine that physicality with what's happening up here, which is all that kind of acting technique stuff about um, action and objective and suddenly we're getting towards something that's a rounded kind of um, physical performance. OK, um, think about the detail. So we've already talked about the blade edge. If you if you hold your knife up here, OK, again, you lose with a, a rubber knife in particular, you're not going to put yourself in any major danger, but that major danger um, that is, is just going to look really naff for an audience because you're you're straight away telling them that this is not a dangerous item. Um, and in the same way as um, we know that we know as a, as a, a as, a, as an actor that this is made of rubber. If we treat it like that, if we get used to treating it like something that we can call a, that we could sort of um, use as a scratching item or as a, you know, as, 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 a, as a kind of toy, then we lose the respect for it. And when we walk out on stage with it, we want the audience to believe whether it's this or this, that it's something really dangerous that we are gonna attack and, and, and maybe even hurt the um, person we're fighting with. And the only really, the only way to really do that is is for you to kind of respect that as an actor, for you to support that in terms of your acting technique. You can have the most expensive, most impressive, handmade stage combat weapon in the world, and you can make it feel like nothing, like a feather duster in your hand, not in a good way. Um, or you can you could take something like an umbrella um, I'm looking for something exciting around here other than the spatula. An umbrella or a rubber chicken. I haven't got a rubber chicken. And you can make that look really vicious and really dangerous by putting the same kind of dynamic behind it. So it's about physical kind of um, kind of specifics, being relaxed, knowing where the edge is, knowing how to articulate and move the knife in your hand. Um, and it's about combining that with the psychology um, from an acting point of view behind what it is that you are doing, what you're trying to sell to the audience as a story. There's one extra grip that um, we sometimes use, which I haven't really talked about, about because we don't 
don't use it very often, which is what we sometimes refer to as the Scylla, uh, Scylla, Scylla Black, it's nothing to do with Scylla Black, the serial killer, um, or, or, or sometimes Psycho is in the film, the Alfred Hitchcock film Psycho Grip, which is very similar to the um, military grip, but what, what it tends to see is the knife the other way around in hand, so it's really only about stabbing, because there's no, no, no easy access to the cutting edge there, um, and thumb on the top, probably not. Look at the uh, poster for, for the film Halloween. Okay, we're less concerned with that. It's it's not so much of a practical kind of fighting style as a um, moment of violence, maybe, particularly in a horror film. Okay, there you are. So that's a, a little bit of detail work in terms of the foundation of um, of fighting with a knife up here, but also in terms of just how you use it in your hand. The stuff that we want really keen on getting across in these videos is the stuff that we we, we kind of go, oh, I haven't got time to think about that when we're um, deep into fight choreography or, st or stage combat, ex learning fight choreography or stage combat, doing a stage combat exam. Um, you might get told early on, this is how you hold the knife. And then you're very, very focused on the choreography all the way through. But actually all that choreography would be much easier to learn, much easier to perform physically and um, in, as, as, a, as an actor in terms of the actual drama of it, if we can get those foundation principles right and that's what things like um lockdown are um are, are well used for in terms of stage combat which is is really kind of honing those foundation elements those kind of inner kind of physical skills that we we sort of very easily kind of forget about when we are deep into working on a stage combat exam okay that's it for now